Today is March 18th, and it's day 9 of 100 heads. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Sketch Soup. Today we will be going over a drawing from 100 Heads Challenge on Instagram and the portrait for this session is from the artist Alphonse Muka. Hopefully I'm saying that right. But he's actually an artist who has inspired a lot of my recent work as far as imag <laughs> imaginative works go. Uh, mainly the aesthetics of his male characters seen in his paintings and more specifically the series that he painted from the Slav epic. So to begin, I wanted to go over my process with the 100 heads challenge. I've been working on the same Canson recycled paper as I do with all my drawings. And with this one, since I want to keep it consistent on a daily basis, I downsized the paper by folding it twice and then cutting it down to there. So my pieces of paper are essentially five by six inches and that helps me manage the drawing and to be able to complete it in a timely manner while staying consistent from day to day completion. And the challenge that this poses with the 100 heads is similar to the Inktober challenge in which you draw the every single day of October with an ink drawing and to help maintain consistency but to also practice discipline in one material and trying to execute that and complete it in the 30 days that you're allotted or 31 days since it's October and this is sort of a step up challenge as it's 100 days but because of the lengthy time and the constraints held by it, I want to hey, be Google. able to still produce Turn my own personal lights. work. So with that, I have to really light. consider the format that I'm working in and also the mediums that I work with. And in some cases, I've drawn a few of the 100 heads in a matter of different mediums, such as brush pen, and in particular, the Pentel ink brush pen. And it speeds up the process for some of the portraits as it encourages me to be bold with my strategy and also laying down the pen to paper. But on days where I have more time, I can carefully consider the portrait that I choose to draw from or whatever resource that I get the image of the head that I want to reference. And because we're drawing 100 heads, that essentially means 100 days that I'll be focusing on this subject, it can be easy to get dis... well, not discouraged, but it can be easily... Um, what I'm trying to say is that you can easily become drained because keeping up with this task can become monotonous. So I encourage that when you're drawing the 100 heads, you either change the subject matter as, not as far as the heads themselves, but maybe if you're drawing only male heads, maybe to change it up and draw the opposite gender. And I tried actually to do that with the seventh day. I was attempting to draw a friend who's a girl, and then I completely <laughs> became immediately out of my comfort zone. I I, of course I can draw them if I take the time to, but because I have been so so long out of practice with drawing females, I completely shied away from it and I immediately returned back to drawing a male head. So I think it poses a challenge for me to get out of my comfort zone. So down the road I'm sure during this challenge I will definitely draw something that's other than a, a male portrait. And another thing that you can try doing is if you become tired of drawing from the same uh, 
source of inspiration for this challenge. You can also, instead of drawing from contemporary people, you can perhaps look into historical figures. So in this instance, what this video is showing that is exactly it. Um, drawing a picture of an individual who's already deceased. And as you're watching this video, this episode of Sketch Soup might be a little off because you'll probably notice already that the video is in real-time um, motion versus the usual time-lapse. And that's because I wanted to take a different approach with Sketch Soup. Sketch Soup. And this should hopefully give people a better perspective at the pace of my drawing and hopefully show Make, show how I make decisions of where I make my pencil marks. Another thing to note is the editing of this episode. I wanted to approach Sketch Soup with a different presentation. So you'll probably notice at the beginning of the episode that I listed the tools that I'm using for this drawing rather than introducing them as the video progresses as how the previous installations of this show has been recorded. So I'm trying to find a way to make my process a bit more streamlined and that way my editing isn't jumbled. But let me know, do you like this approach with Sketch Soup? If not, leave a comment below on how I can change it or do you want me to revert back to the old presentation of Sketch Soup? Um, but in just a moment, I will fast forward the speed of the drawing so it's a bit of a fusion of the old and new that way you can see everything fall into action and see the end results faster so just a little bit about Alphonse Mucha artwork he is mostly known for the Slav epic which is to be honest how I found out about him and as soon as I saw his paintings I was taken aback not just by the detail but the design of the figures in the paintings. And it's a good depiction of historical information as far as cultures go. So in this case, Alphonse Mucha was mainly depicting a lot of um, history and mythological backgrounds of the Slavic people. And these are all backgrounds that are all European based. So people like the Polish or Czechs and expanding as far as Russians and Ukrainians go. And up on the screen, I'm going to show some figures in his paintings that really drew my attention. And I think you can see some of the influence as far as my own character design goes. But for the most part, I think what I liked about his uh, male figures was the the way they dressed and I think it's of course definitely culture based at the time that at the time of history that he was depicting but a lot of them are just in robes but still showing their bare chest and I think a lot of my a lot of my own dra drawings I like to show that type of masculinity um, in my own characters so I think that's a good, something that I, that I liked. <laughs> I think why I resonated a lot with these figures was because of their strong physical form being presented in almost a feminine fashion. Not necessarily the way they were dressed, but the soft qualities of the clothes that they were wearing. And I think that was something that I not me personally couldn't relate to, but the quality of what my art kind of shows. And I think that's one of the reasons why I'm really drawn to Alphonse Mucha in general. But really his paintings are, are really beautiful. So if you get a chance, definitely look up his work. And just a side note, these paintings are massive in scale. I was doing some research and found that they were almost spanning 26 feet wide to 20 feet tall um, or even the opposite and I think the chance to see them in person I, I wouldn't 
passed up. So hopefully I am able to do that one day. So just a last few additional facts about the Slav epic. They were considered Muka's life masterwork. And I can definitely see why. And in total, there were 20 paintings in the series. So just imagine being in a room surrounded by 20 colossal paintings, I think would be probably any artist's dream at this point. All right, well, as I finish the last few details of this Muka portrait, I want to thank everyone again for taking the time to watch my videos and also following me on social media. And if you haven't yet, definitely follow me on Instagram and please like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel and hopefully show your friends and spread the word about my sketch videos. I would definitely appreciate it. Other than that though, I will leave you all for the evening and until then, I will see you all in the next one.